been 10. The Emmy award-winning animated action franchise has brought us 15 years of media that desired to embrace the series in a fresh, newer take, and video games have always been one of the hardest fields for it to tackle. With Ben 10 Power Trip stepping up to represent the current effort in bringing Ben 10 to life in modern, interactive experience, can it satisfy our inner itch to transform into an arsenal of alien heroes and explore the world with awesome power? I'm Hershey. And I'm Fro and we're going to take a deep dive into the Ben 10 game that might take the crown as the best Ben 10 game made so far. Hicks! Ben Tennyson? With that energy combined, I shall be unstoppable! You won't get away with this, X. Stop trying to remix my plan! Ben 10 Power Trip is an open world action and adventure game by Outright Games based on a 2016 iteration of the show. It follows 10 year old Ben Tennyson as he travels around many unique locations in the game, such as the fictional town of Strudebeck and vast puzzling mountainscapes, to stop the evil magician Hex from collecting mystical artifacts while magical creatures begin to leak into our dimension. Unlike most Ben 10 games, it actually takes quite a bit of time to complete the story mode, in which you'll be spending time fighting enemies, expanding your locations on the map, solving your standard environment puzzles, and of course, turning into aliens and staring at them for hours, as the 3D models look so vibrant and stunning in this game. The characters don't look half bad either, but the way this game adapted these aliens as playable characters is nothing to overlook. With non-stop objectives and a large map to scale, it isn't hard to stay busy playing Power Trip. As I progressed through the main mission line, I saw my side missions and activities constantly filling up, giving me an incentive to revisit locations I've already been to for additional gameplay and explore areas I might not have been able to reach without the right alien before. One of Power Trip's biggest advantages is the open world map. You can walk from one end of the map to the other with zero loading time or lag, and each alien has a special ability that expands your exploring capabilities even further. Not just in certain locations, but literally wherever you want. You'll have to try extremely hard to find a location in the map that has an invisible wall or an uncrossable barrier. Every single rooftop, hill, and building in this game is easily climbable once you've got the hang of the aliens. And the other abilities are always accessible, as opposed to only being able to use them in specific situations. A large interactive map is one thing, but what's the game like when it's time to put your aliens on the front line and defend the world from enemies? The controls are pretty standard for an action adventure game, so you shouldn't have a hard time getting the hang of how to fight with each alien. You have your light and heavy attacks, which of course you can combine to create combo moves for that extra flair. You can also evade attacks by jumping or dodging, and take things a step further by using your alien's special ability in combat, like creating shields, grabbing enemies out of the air and pulling them towards you, and even climbing on top of them to destroy them from the inside. You advance your abilities through a 20 point system, split into three stats. toughness which can decrease damage taken during combat, power, which increases your own damage output, and luck, which gives you extra loot and gives you a chance for a lucky shot, aka a critical hit. I started only buffing my strength, but I quickly found that you can take some heavy damage, so I needed to start focusing on toughness as well. I thought I'd never get lucky, but I couldn't resist that either. So from then on, I decided to build my stats pretty evenly, unless I found myself needing one more than the other for certain missions. While you can't fight as Ben, the game offers you six transformations to battle with. The biggest improvement this game has over any of the others is that you don't have a time limit on how long you can be an alien. Power Trip lets you fully embrace the desire to feel like a master of the Omnitrix. The quick change feature has never felt smoother as you can change between aliens at any point in time, during a combo, in mid-air, even while running. With nothing holding you back from using your aliens to the fullest, let's take a look at each alien and what they add to the game. Your world famous alien hero is here! Heat Blast is the first alien you unlock in the game. It has a big advantage with the earlier missions as he's the only one that can double jump. The quick change feature makes it very easy to switch between Ben and Heat Blast in seconds, so you're always going to want him in one of your quick change slots to make sure nothing stands in your way. You can also use Heat Blast to light fires and burn away obstacles, and during combat he has some of the best combos out of them all. Fellas, we got off on the wrong foot. 
while Ben Scooter gives you an extra boost of speed. Playing as Accelerate lets you clear long distances with ease, as long as you can get the turning right. This is the first Ben 10 game where Accelerate is naturally fast when moving around, but you can also give him a super speed boost to go even faster, which is where the open world in this game shines the most. You can run on top of anything in this game and can glide on railing and telephone poles for unique ways of travel. In combat, Accelerate can literally run circles around his opponents and can still land hits while using his super speed boost, making him a great choice for ground level enemies. Okay then, let's go figure! Of course, the first reboot exclusive alien has to be a part of this game, and he feels right at home as another option to choose from. His combos always feel so satisfying to land, and he can create various electrical constructs to fight with, such as a baseball bat, a hammer, and even a frying pan. Shock Rock can also grapple onto flying enemies and pull them out of the air, and he can use his whips to grapple around the map like a certain familiar spider-themed hero. His heavy attack can stun large enemies too, making them easier to deal with. His electricity can also be used to charge machinery around the map for various puzzles and loot grinding. It's nice to see my favorite reboot alien get some love in this game. I even drew this picture of him. Hey Hershey, that's a pretty nice drawing. If you guys ever have any art that you want to share, why don't you post that below in our Discord server? We'll take a look and critique on a bi-weekly Sundays as part of our new series, Talk to the Tank. You can head over to our second channel after this video to check out some of our previous episodes, where we've interviewed fellow Ben 10 YouTubers and gave our thoughts on upcoming media, and get the inside scoop on projects we're working with. But before you do that, let's take a look at the next playable alien, Wrath. If you think you can beat Wrath, you got another thing coming! <laughs> Fan favorite that broke into the reboot in the later seasons, Raft is ironically the strongest alien in the game, despite forearms also being in your roster. One of his special attacks involves a powerful roar that gives you a temporary strength boost, and when you're getting swarmed, this unique special can seriously make a difference. His acrobatic qualities are also played up heavily, as Raft is the only alien that can scale extremely steep walls and jump across challenging obstacles without any effort. During missions, he can sniff around to detect hidden switches in the map, and is used for fetch quest side missions when you beat the main story. Drink it in, bad boys! With Raft being the go-to brute for the game, where does that leave Forearm? While he's still pretty good in combat, Forearms is most useful when solving puzzles. He can drag around objects in the map and reposition them to reveal new pathways. He can also break down barriers for hidden loot after winding up a powerful punch. While he's the only one without a unique way to travel the map, it wouldn't be a top-notch Ben 10 game if they didn't include Tennyson's own favorite alien, the Crimson Bruiser himself. Don't make me put my foot down! If those first five aliens didn't sell you on the gameplay, Diamond Head makes everything worth it. He has a unique method of travel that functions as a glide, so you can't elevate using it, only de-escalate. But you can gain a huge amount of distance before ever touching the ground, and there's no limit to the length of your glide. His shield can also lift up enemies, deflect certain attacks, and act as an obstacle to gain advantage and take control of the battlefield. His ranged attack is a little slow, as he can only throw one crystal at a time. But the crystals can lock onto their targets, making Diamond Head the best to use at a distance. Making Ben 10 a multiplayer game never seemed like it had a right solution until Ben 10 Power Trip. Well, I just figured the strongest and second strongest dudes could team up. How about it? <sighs> you got yourself a deal, second strongest. Kevin has his own Omnitrix, known as the Antitrix, that gives him his own set of aliens to use. Instead of having another random Ben Tennyson in the game, or having to play as one of the side characters, both you and your friend can enjoy the powers of the Omnitrix together, in all areas of story mode, and the side missions as well. You might be thinking, but Kevin doesn't have Shock Rock or Rav, so how is this going to work? Well, Outright Games put in the effort to make sure that Kevin's arsenal stays true to the series, giving Kevin access to Bashmouth and Thornblade as substitutes. Functionally, they are still the same as Shock Rock and Rav, so you're never locked out of the gameplay as Kevin. But it's nice to have that extra care put into features you can only access in the multiplayer mode. Multiplayer does have some disadvantages though, at least if you're playing as Kevin. Kevin can never be the one to activate the main quest triggers in the story. And if you stray too far away as Kevin, you'll eventually be teleported back to Ben. Even if Ben is the one to stray away from the path, Kevin is still the one who will teleport to Ben. So make sure that whoever is playing Ben knows what they are doing. 
Since Kevin can't progress to certain parts of the story as much as Ben, he's really only there as an extra set of hands for Ben, but when it comes to combat, he's still on par. You can have hours of fun running through alien mobs with your friend to see who can take on the most enemies the fastest, or race around the map and discover more locations, missions, and secrets. Ben 10 Power Trip definitely sets itself apart from any Ben 10 game made before. It starts off a bit slower than we would have liked, but it forces you to make use of the abilities you have at the time. And we really appreciate the effort Outright Games has put into this project. The game strength comes from how fun the gameplay can be. The combat is certainly not the most difficult out there, and the more you level up, you'll be breezing through enemies even without the power up bars. But combat is only a fraction of what this game has to offer. I can't see myself getting tired of running around this map using all the alien and feeling like I'm making the most out of my Omnitrix. If you're a fan of the reboot, this game is a wonderful gift to have a chance to play. And if you're a fan of Ben 10 in general, playing as these aliens will satisfy you and give you the kind of enjoyment you're looking for in a Ben 10 game. Ben 10 Power Trip is available at GameStop, Walmart, and Amazon on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and PC. Thank you guys so much for watching our review for Power Trip. And don't forget to check out Talk to the Tank in our daily live streams over on the Rust Bucket. And as always, I've been Fro, the bro with the fro. I'm Hershey the Panda Man. I'll see you guys next time.